the whole idea of finding out what molecules are available to be drugged or, or treated is very exciting. There was a whole session on this. Um, Laurie Friedman, you've been looking at new drugs on the horizon yes. here at the AACR meeting. Could you sum up, there were a few criteria. First of all, what were the criteria for qualifying for your session? Mm -hmm. So we choose um, uh, from among the um, people who apply to get into this session, we choose by, based on criteria that are, uh, the drug must be entering into early stage clinical trials. So phase one. And then a second criteria is that this must be the first disclosure of what the actual compound is uh, that's entering into the clinic. So this is breaking news. This is very much breaking news. And it's a, a very well attended uh, session because people are very excited to see um, sort of how some of the preclinical research have solved some of the harder issues in drug discovery. Now, let me ask you about some of this breaking news then, because you've been looking at FGFR 1, 2, and 3. Now, Nigel Brooks gave a presentation. Yes. What was that all about? Which cancers and what mm -hmm. came out of it? Right. Um, so um, there had been a first generation of FGFR inhibitors uh, several years ago, and those turned out to be uh, not very well tolerated in the clinic, and the culprit was thought to be FGFR 4. So this new generation of drugs now has eliminated FGFR4 activity focused on uh, the actual drivers in cancer, FGFR1, 2, and 3. And uh, then the hope with these new molecules is when they enter phase one, they will be tolerated and yet also be able to target it to the patients who have driver mutations. And the data you heard was on gastric and hematologic malignancies. Yes, that's what, right. What came up? Right, so uh, the preclinical models, uh, for instance, um, the evaluated gastric cancer patient, uh, patient models uh, with FGFR2 amplifications, and those indeed showed cell death when treated with these inhibitors. Um, so we, we think these are very promising and look forward to new data as the phase one trials progress. Right, so that's phase one. You haven't got the, the efficacy yet. Right. But um, uh, another one was um, HER2. We've heard a lot about HER2, mm -hmm. of course, but you've got a small molecule was talked about. Yes, so Kevin Koch from Array uh, discussed a new small molecule that's specific for HER2. And here, uh, their goal was to uh, remove or diminish the EGFR activity. Uh, so there are some dual inhibitors in the clinic, like lapatinib, uh, which has approval in breast cancer. And uh, the goal of this project was to say, OK, can we reduce any of the side effects um, uh, and increase the tolerability? and how will we progress that in the clinic? If we can get more drug on, will we be more effective? So a more specific drug for so her So it's a, a more specific drug for HER2 compared to lapatinib, uh, so a small molecule way to uh, attack the HER2 positive breast cancers. The other thing unique about this molecule is that preclinically, uh, it can cross into uh, the brain so that there's a hope that there would be uh, the ability to treat metastatic uh, breast cancer that has been uh, metastasized into the brain. So you've got tolerability information so far. Any hint of efficacy? Uh, there are some hints of efficacy. So there was a bit of uh, phase one uh, data presented in some HER2 positive patients, and there were indeed some uh, PRs. And lung cancer is a disease where you really do need some markers, and there was some news here, wasn't there, in your session? Yes, that's correct. So there's been um, uh, molecular characterization of lung cancer has been coming out over the last several years, and one uh, driver mutation that was recently identified is called ALK, and this ALK uh, protein product is, is activated in lung cancer. And so there was a first-generation molecule by Pfizer that hit uh, both CMET and ALK, and this has shown activity in early clinical trials. And now this, uh, what we presented at the New Drugs Horizon, uh, on the Horizon session by Dr. Sakamoto from, um, from Chugai, um, the molecule now is a new generation which very precisely inhibits the ALK protein only. And so the hope is that it will uh, uh, turn out in the clinic to be a, a very specific and pure molecule to, to interrogate this disease. Now, as a druggable molecule, mm -hmm. how good is it looking at the moment? Uh, so the first data from um, Pfizer look very good. Uh, so the uh, response rate is quite high. Um, it's very interesting because it's only a subset of non-small cell lung cancer, um, but it's a, it's a, it seems to be a very wonderful uh, uh, way to attack this disease. And so we're looking forward to uh, both the data in the clinic from the first generation and the second generation molecules to see if we can really affect cures. And this selective ALK inhibitor 
could be useful in both squamous and non-squamous. Yes, so, so it's very much more defined uh, uh, by the uh, DNA mutation, uh, the driver being ALK, and uh, agnostic to which subtype of the disease it is. Judging from your session on mm -hmm. new drugs on the horizon, what are your feelings? There's a big desire now to generate specific targets and to mm -hmm. be more refined in the approach to treating cancer. Right. How encouraged are you? I'm very encouraged. I think, um, you know, with personalized health care really coming to the forefront, um, you know, it will take us time and iter iterative um, methods to really design the most precise and best drugs. And uh, one of the challenges, of course, in, in, in cancer research and, and cancer drug discovery is to really understand what the targets are doing. And so the better inhibitors we have, the more precise uh, these inhibitors are and the more selective, the more we'll be able to understand the biology about what that protein target does. Of course, these are all very encouraging things, but they can seem rather distant. What would you say to doctors who have patients to treat mm -hmm. about some of these new targets? Are right. they too far ahead or, or are there lessons that can be learned mm -hmm. for your own individualizing of therapy right now? Right. I think it's a very exciting time because, uh, because things are moving so quickly both on uh, new ways to stratify patients, um, their diseases, you know, can be molecularly characterized now. And now that there are all these new um, therapeutics coming through in, in clinical trials and, and many will start to be approved, you know, many more targeted therapies will be approved very soon. Um, so I think it's a, a, a chance to really redefine the disease and move beyond what's seen, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a histology method and really understand the molecular underpinnings and then match the right drug to the right patient. So I think this is uh, basically, these are, these are wonderful molecules for doing the precise human experiment, which is the ultimate goal, so that we know how to match the right drug to the right patient. And do you, do you think there's enough in it to, for the busy cancer doctor, though, at the moment? I think um, there will need to be because of the, uh, uh, certainly I'm from the U.S., and so the state of um, how healthcare is being managed uh, is, in a, is in a state of flux right now. And I think the more we really think about how to um, do precision medicine, uh, how to personalize the treatments uh, that will get the most benefit for the patient, uh, this is what all the uh, healthcare uh, providers and reimbursers and so on will be looking for. So I think as, uh, as the day-to-day uh, -day physician treats their patients, uh, they will start saying, okay, we, perhaps we need to send a sample to this other lab where it will be analyzed in a molecular basis. Dr. Friedman, it's great to have you with us mm -hmm. here on eCancer Television. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here.